Hey, everybody out there. This is our brand new spanking show, uh, Dailies to Download. My name is Chad. I, other than being a movie fan for a very long time, I wrote for 411mania.com in the movie zone. I was the editor there. I was a columnist, a reviewer, um, pretty much everything there that you can think of, um, and have stayed a movie fan, even though I do not write for that site any longer. And my co-host here is Eric. Hi everyone. Uh, I uh, my uh, my own. I, well, I also wrote for Four One One for uh, for like two years back. That's how Chad and I met originally. Uh, still doing some writing for uh, Filmmaker Magazine, uh, Slant Magazine, Cineast, a couple, a lot of different places. Mostly like interviews with filmmakers and things of that nature. Uh, and I am happy to be joining you for this. All right. So. Our show is basically designed to cover various topics in the movie industry, some obscure, some not, and we don't want to take up too much of your time. They shouldn't be, these videos shouldn't be too long, um, just enough for you to kind of get engaged with us and listen to what we have to say, and um, hopefully you like some of the topics we choose. Today's topic is going to be about the coronavirus and its effect on movies and movie watching and the movie industry. Um, so to start, let's just talk about kind of how the how our movie watching has changed since this whole thing began. Obviously, I think for a lot of people it became real. March 11th was the day that the NBA canceled the season. That was also the same time that Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson announced that they had COVID-19. And I think there was one other thing that happened that same night. But that was pretty much when it became real for everybody. So it's been about five months that we've all been, you know, trying to adjust to this pandemic and, um, you know, uh, how we can't go to the movie theater and we kind of have to adjust how we watch movies. So, Eric, if you want to talk about, you know, you, you obviously would go to the movies a lot, uh, not yeah. only movies, but Broadway shows and all that kind of stuff, you know, being in New York City. Um, how has this changed the way you watch movies? Are you going through withdrawal, not going to the theater, or are you having to find movies in different ways? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's very strange for a while. It took me some adjusting because, as you mentioned, on, on March 11th and everything shut down, there was no uh, backup plan, no new release date schedule shuffling at that point. So for a good maybe month or two. So I kind of saw it as this, this moment in time where I, I would always talk about like, oh, someday I'm going to get to in the heat of the night or i'm gonna get to uh uh mississippi burning i don't know why I have all these it's of the moment i guess uh these kind of movies but but i but you know you kind of say i'm gonna get to those at some point and then you maybe you don't uh and then all of a sudden it like what in our lives hopefully will we have this moment where everything kind of stopped uh films or shows or anything kind of coming out so I, I took that as an opportunity to kind of like go back and watch a lot of things that I had kind of missed over the years, but always wanted to get to. And then by the time I feel like we hit May and June, we started seeing films that were going to have a theatrical release, just either either delay a year, like the Fast and the Furious or um, uh, J a James Bond, you know, the uh, Quiet Place Part Two, all these things that were like right about to come out right before the shutdown, and then they're like, okay, we're gonna try six months from now or next June, twenty twenty one. We're not gonna risk it. Uh, so that's been interesting. L luckily, um, we have kind of had to focus in on things like Netflix and this new plethora of streaming platforms. Some that kind of got expedited as a result of the pandemic and it's that's all we have at the moment uh so so i've had yeah i've had to adjust in a way uh I, i'm also kind of enjoying it in the sense that i'm not trying to catch up as much as i feel like we you know you you can never really catch up if things are coming out every single friday and you're gonna you're gonna miss weeks and you're gonna have other things hopefully in life going on and you're not gonna be able to dedicate you know, right. all your time to that. Uh, so it's been nice seeing that. Um, yeah, but what, what about yourself? Yeah, so far? well, it's funny you mentioned like watching old movies more and like I have a ton of 
movies in you know on my shelves that are still sealed that I haven't watched. And you're right, this would have been a great time to kind of tear some of those open and give them a shot. But since I, you know, my movie watch, at least my time in going to the theater over the past few years having kids has kind of gone down. I I took this as like kind of a kick in the pants to okay, you know, I want to go out of my way to see what's new because you know, after hearing about some of the, you know, will the Academy Awards, will they postpone their ceremony? Will it not happen? You know, like all these movies being delayed or pushed or whatever, I took it as an up to like, okay, like I want to make sure I see the movies that are out there that aren't getting their proper releases and that you have to kind of search around for some of them. And, you know, if I can be a voice to recommend certain movies like Driveways, or, you know, uh, Bloody Nose Empty Pockets or something like that, you know, I wanted to be able to do that. And so like, I've seen more new releases lately than I probably would have if it was just a normal movie season. Um, Because as you were saying, some of the, all these different streaming platforms, a lot of movies are on Netflix or, you know, Palm Springs is on Hulu um, Mm -hmm. and other, other platforms as well. But some of them you really have to search for like driveways mm-hmm. i had to get a ticket a digital ticket on mm-hmm. a movie theater website and watch it that way now it was basically the same as like an itunes you had 48 hours to watch it or you know three days to watch it um but you know you'd have to know where to find those movies you know i would kind of look on metacritic and see what was highly recommended and see if it was available or if it wasn't and you know if i saw that it was streaming i would try to find where it was streaming and sometimes they're easier to find than others um, so yeah, I mean, that's basically what I've been doing. I, I've been trying to see as many new releases as I can, and it's been, it's been fun that way, you know, because I think it's important now to give some of these films praise, whereas they might not get it if we don't, um, you know, and obviously like one of the topics like you touched on was the, is the fact that a lot of these movies are being delayed and pushed to 2021 and some of them are going straight to streaming you know and it's kind of caused a little bit of a i don't know what i want to say controversy maybe controversy is the right word you know some people agree with it some people don't you know certain movie theaters for a while movie theater chains were you know like threatening to not show certain movies from different studios because they skipped the theater process all together to go straight to streaming um so i'm sure you've seen a lot of those pieces of news over the past five months so what did you what do you think about that whole thing do you think that it makes more sense to skip uh, to go right to a like a you know delay a year like james bond fast and the furious or coming out next summer and whereas some movies are just you know like are going right to streaming uh yeah i i feel that i feel like what we're what we're seeing now is that as a lot of those decisions are getting made are that i guess studios really can't wait it, it's it's amazing it, that a lot of these you know quarterly these quarters that they're like their financial uh goals that they have to hit like it's kind of like a house of cards like if they just if they just delay it like we we as you're seeing so many layoffs and things of that nature um at the same time, I kind of feel for some of those filmmakers who may not, ha- who may have that decision made for them as a result. Uh, by by that I mean they've already announced that they're delaying the next Halloween movie until October of 2021, uh, because typically you can only release a movie called Halloween around Halloween. But we, of course, if you look back over the series, that's not always the case. But typically, it makes sense to release Halloween around Halloween. So. They were not going to risk it with a 2020 release, so they move it to 2021. I think it would but be great then, to see Halloween and Memorial Day. <laughs> I mean, that's when I watch them all. I, I mean, it, that's you know, I mean, there's there's patriotism, and, and you know, it's not bad. Um, but then, but then something like the Bloomhouse will announce that Candyman is taking that 20 that October 2020 slot, and it's right. like, why is that? Are you saying that's a less important film? Are you, are you saying that's okay for people to, I'm being a little dramatic, but people to risk their health to see? Um, right. It's, it just shows that 
um, you know, we'll put Mulan on Disney Plus with that extra surcharge of thirty five dollars. But right. but but we you know we're not going to do that for Black Widow and things like that. You know, it, it could, I would feel as like a filmmaker. I don't I don't know if I'd be offended, but I do think it's interesting what they're choosing to delay versus what they're choosing to put on this. What they what do they call them, like a premium VOD? Um, right. Where yeah. where yeah. It, it it's interesting because I think that it is like you were saying it's kind of showing what they're willing to what movies they're willing to take a hit on, mm-hmm. and what movies they definitely don't want to take a hit on. You know, I mean, obviously something like, you know, the next Bond movie, No Time to Die, is obviously always a big money maker. And so, like, it's also kind of showing, like, okay, we really care about money. So we want to make sure that that one gets a theatrical release. You know, whereas you were saying, like, Mulan or some of these other movies, like, well, we could you know, we could skip theaters and just go straight. It it does, it's, you know, it is kind of like a, you know, like a little bit of a slap, you know, like to, to the filmmakers. And, you know, at the same time, you know, as much as I miss going to the movie theater, uh, you know, there's nothing like a movie theater experience. As much as I miss that, I think that some of the, I like the fact that some of these movies are going straight to streaming. I think giving people more content new content is an important thing right now um and so it's good to see that some of them some of these studios are trying to put new stuff out there even though they know they're probably not gonna make back what they want um you know and you know you mentioned Mulan which was certainly something I wanted to touch on at some point here because like a lot of these movies like the king of Staten Island for example like that yeah. had a twenty dollar price tag to rent, and you know a lot of people I talk to who you know don't go to the movies as much, kind of scoff at that and immediately react like, "Oh man, twenty dollars just to rent it? That's ridiculous." But the logic is right there in front of you. I mean, if two people are going to see a movie, already you're north of twenty dollars for two tickets. So mm-hmm. a twenty dollar price tag to rent when the studio has no idea how many people you're going to have in there to watch it kind of makes sense you know like you know so twenty dollars i think is okay however the mulan thirty dollar one is to me a mistake yeah on on top of the 6.99 for the monthly subscription right for disney plus i think right yeah and like i mean it's thirty dollars even though they say you get to keep it like still thirty dollars to me is an immediate turn off like you know if if twenty dollars is a turn off for some like thirty dollars should be like an extra turn off um, you know, like I appreciate the fact that they're bringing these movies out, even the King of Staten Island, which I really want to see. I have not seen it yet. Um, but that's going to be available to rent here in the month of August. Rent for a reasonable price. It's not going to be $20 anymore. So I can wait, you know, and that's kind of what they're, you know, not forcing people to do. They're forced, well, forcing people to make a decision on whether or not you want to wait till it's cheaper. Or if you do want to watch it right now, then you're going to have to pay $20 or $30. I am interested to see how much money they make out of Mulan. Um, yeah. You know, because it's, uh, like I said, $30. I mean, you know, even $30, like if you're assuming a family of four is going to sit down to watch it, four movie tickets is obviously well beyond $30. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, and, and when you mentioned... Yeah, think, thinking of the price for Mulan, but even a bigger one, which is why I wound up with Disney Plus in the first place, is because they all of a sudden they said, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna drop Hamilton a year early, you know, and, and like I feel like that like brought on an extra forty million Disney Plus subscribers. They were gonna release that in theaters in like October of twenty twenty one. They pushed that up over a year, um, and there was not going to be a theatrical run for that in terms of in theater. So you're giving up the grosses um, for that. And and as, as for like Mulan and deciding to go right to the streaming idea. Also, I'm thinking so much more globally for, for a lot of reasons, like, you know, thinking about how much nicer it now seems to live in any other country, but you know, the, like just mm-hmm. thinking of they're They're moving ahead since the virus is somewhat more contained so for Christopher Nolan and stuff, who, who you know, they're going to release their film internationally no matter what. And 
there's going to be obviously it's going to be pirated the minute it screens in any right. public form anywhere. So I get the idea of like going to digital. I think Mulan is still going to be opening in theaters, like in some international territory. I have, I'd imagine in China, it would, you know, it, there are going to be certain places where I think it is still going to be a theatrical release. But you have to kind of get ahead of that pirating that you know is going to come within 24 hours, right? So right. is this yeah. the best way to recoup fast enough? I also think that in, in relation to Milan, when you said you get to keep it, eventually I feel like that paywall is going to dissipate. It's going to go away. Sure, right? if, you, if you watch it enough times, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and like or in like three three months or six months from now, who's to say Mulan will still be on Disney Plus and they'll remove the thirty dollar fee? I I feel like right. We're just waiting for that. And, you know? and on and on that note, like when they remove the fee, um, you know, Universal recently announced that they're limiting the you know theatrical to digital or theatrical to DVD window to seventeen days. You know, which you know is an interesting move. I don't know if any theaters are going to follow suit. Um, but, uh, I'm sure you saw that. I, I think that that's a good thing. And that kind of leads into, you know, how I want to wrap up our discussion here in that, like when you hear news, like the theatrical window to digital being limited to 17 days, whereas it was like, you know, I don't know, a couple months or whatever, three months, um, before to me, this, it proves that this, pandemic has changed the movie industry forever um i don't know that we're it's ever going to be the same again i know that it'll probably be some it'll be like a new normal i think so to speak i don't think that the theaters are going to open back up and everybody's just going to flock to them like they did before i don't i truly don't think that's going to happen and if you have stuff like these theatrical to digital windows being you know, narrowed, I think that more people are just going to wait and, you know, watch the movie at their house. So what do you think? Do you think that this is going to affect the movie industry forever? Or do you think that this is just kind of a blip that we'll eventually get back from? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's definitely, um, in, in a sense, it's not necessarily created something new i think it's like taking advantage of like the theatrical window i feel like for as long as we've been talking about movies together has always been threatened right like there there's always back in the day with mag Mag magnolia would have like the soderbergh movies that would be on vod and at the landmark sunshine on the same day right you know there were always these smaller films that would be able to do vod for 9.99 because it's only going to be in five art house theaters in the country so we're going to also go on video on the same day. We ne- we've never seen it to this extent where these like $200 million uh, movies are, are part of that. I think also the three week window is something that was kind of being eased in by Netflix like last year where they had like the Irishman open in, in New York and LA on November 1st. And then Thanksgiving weekend, it was going to be streaming and, and for a marriage story and the two popes. Um, so I, I definitely think that other films as, as it was becoming before the pandemic, right? Like you're going to have Avengers on six of the eight screens and yeah. it was going to keep pushing out things even further. I think that gets even, that becomes even more the case. Whereas costs rise, people are going to be even more hesitant to go out to see it in theaters. If it's not a quote unquote movie theater movie, which being general, but like is a, usually a big sound visual imax experience those kind of things may actually become more special the road show right. cinerama kind of things um and, and also recently they just the law that that paramount law that was in effect since like the 30s about studios not being able to own theaters that has just that is done uh so the, the netflix netflix owns the egyptian in california and the paris now here in new york uh, I think we may have studios owning theaters w- w- just to kind of use them as the rules have changed this year, but going back to say next year, you still will need a theatrical release to qualify for awards. I assume maybe right. that, maybe, maybe there's no going back from that either. Now that we've right. well, removed yeah, that's that a whole other topic. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that, but that is a part of, you mentioned it's more important now to how do you find out that these movies exist? Uh, like now I think the New York times is like, okay, we are going to cover streaming 
movies and things like that. You know, they they put their foot down for so long until they couldn't any longer because of the pandemic. Uh, so I, I do feel like the theatrical uh, experience is still going to exist. I think the three weeks is still enough time. If you don't want to have Jurassic World 3 spoiled for you, you're going to make an effort to be there in that three week window. Um, but for the movies like Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, or um, Kelly Reichardt's First Cow, things like that, yeah, I think that it is going to be a more premium VOD uh, model. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we could go on talking about this, you know, like what are the theaters going to look like when they do open up, you know, or is there going to be social distancing? You know, how is that going to look? Obviously, movie theaters make a lot of their money on concessions. You know, mm -hmm. what, you know what's going to happen there? I, I definitely, you know, it, it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens. I definitely, you know, the days of, you know, all of us being packed into the theater together and, you know, every weekend, I, I think that it will, I don't think it will be like that again. Um, I hope by, that it can go back to some semblance of normality, but I, you know, I just, I see a lot more home viewing being, you know, not that it wasn't already on its way, like you were talking about with Netflix, but uh, I definitely think it'll be more leaning towards that. Um, but uh, we will see what happens. That uh, is our show for today. Um, definitely check out some of the new movies. Uh, just real quick, I will certainly recommend uh, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. Uh, anything you want to recommend off the top of your head, Eric? Uh, there's there's uh, The Fight, which was a documentary about the ACLU that just came out from the filmmakers who made uh, Wiener, the Anthony Wiener doc from a few years ago, which I enjoyed. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, there's the John Lewis doc that happened to come out one week before he passed, you know, strangely enough. Right. Uh, but yeah, check those out. All right. Well, definitely go see those. Thank you for tuning into our show. Tune in next week around the same time, and we will give you another one. Thank you very much, and have a great day.